All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Real McCoy Radio. Yeah. Special night tonight because you get two McCoys for the price of one. <laughs> the real McCoys. Yep, both of us. Um, so my best friend and my wife and business partner, Tana, on the show today. Yes. How's it going, guys? I am stoked to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I get to introduce you, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. So I don't mind bragging about you because I do it often. Um, so you are an IFBB Bikini Pro. Mm -hmm. You are a four-time IFBB Bikini Pro champ, five-time IFBB Bikini Pro Olympian. Yes. Um, you're voted most beautiful girl in the world nine times in a row. <laughs> By me. <laughs> I was about to say, where was that? <laughs> nine years in a, nine years running. <laughs> You're still the one. champ. <laughs> <laughs> it's, she's my wife. I can still hit on her though, right? <laughs> mm, yeah, I guess so. I'll take it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, we're three episodes into the podcast. This is the fourth one. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've been talking a lot about um, the business of fitness. Yes. Which I don't know how much you know kind of my followers know about how much into the business you are mm -hmm. and i don't even know if your followers really understand but you're a pretty business savvy uh young lady yeah yeah i don't think a lot of people realize that i think they just see me as just the ifbb bikini pro the competitor the athlete um but you know there's a lot that goes on behind the camera um, and that's kind of the awesome part of my job is that I can be in front of the camera, but I get to be behind the camera too. Yeah. Um, which I mean, not just like camera work, like we're talking sure. about business, but I'm just saying like in reference, like, um, it's fun to be able to play both. Yeah. So I think this will be, um, pretty cool and you have a lot of value to provide, um, because you have uh, an interesting business model and a lot of stuff that, um, you know, fitness professionals I would assume want to emulate. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to pick your brain. And uh, I know a lot about what you're up to. So I think we'll get some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool uh, ideas about what you're doing. So first and foremost, um, you know, just kind of describe your fitness business. My fitness business. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know that. That's why I had to ask such a broad question. <laughs> it is. I know. That's why. And it does. If I don't know. It's like um, I think these questions are always the hardest, too, when it's like, you know what you do. But it's like to first somebody like me who doesn't just like have a specific job. Sure. It's kind of hard to say. But in a list form, because that is like how I like to do things. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, very much um, do a little bit of everything. So. Um, first and foremost, you know, um, we have the gym together, um, but we've had the gyms together for the past, like I say 10, but I wasn't really around for that first year, but I like to think I was, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, we've had the gyms, um, and I wasn't really so much involved with Metroflex, um, and then later destination, um, kind of, and then, um, now hidden gym. We're definitely very much um, both You're full involved. on board now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fully on board. And, um, you know, that was like awesome. I wanted to be more on board with that than I was even with the other gyms. So I was super excited to be a part of that. I think more my role um, for Hidden Gym is just like overall branding and like the look and um, the vibe and just everything um, that just has to do with the branding of Hidden Gym. Um, you know, you kind of go more on the business savvy side, the financing and all the great, wonderful number stuff that I'm not great at. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I've really just kind of designed the gym and everything that kind of went with that. I run the social media um, and then we kind of go outside of the gym business and we go into more of my business because they are separate. Um, so my business, Tawny Eubanks McCoy, we just have branded, obviously. Um, and I have online training that I do. Um, and then I'm also a posing coach for other bikini girls. And then I'm an athlete um, for a few different companies. Yeah. Caged Muscle, Icon Meals, and Rider Wear. 
So as far as like my business goes, I have like a wide variety of things that I'm like working on. Um, and each being an athlete for those is like social media branding and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then the online training has its own big <laughs> thing yeah, but going I, on. That's with part that. of the kind of the point I wanted to make with that question. Um, because we're going to kind of follow your journey along and there's not a real, there's not that many, just one single jobs as a fitness professional, you kind of have to piece it together based on your strengths. And you've done that for, you know, you haven't really had a job. You've mm -hmm. had some part-time gigs, mm -hmm. um, but for, for the most part, you've worked for, you've been able to work for yourself for the last, you know, forever, yeah. you know, I mean, ever. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, you're, you've been able to be resourceful enough to mm -hmm. play your strengths and your opportunities in a way that you've been successful, mm -hmm. um, financially and, um, in, in the, in the industry, uh, working for yourself mm -hmm. and it takes that kind of variety. Yeah. It's, and it's so funny to like sit, sit here and like, I say it all and you know it, but then to hear you like you know, repeat it and say it back. I'm like, damn, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like It is yeah. like, you know, there's not just a set anything and I've never done a set anything. And I, I would prefer it that way anyways. <laughs> like I, yeah. it can get super overwhelming. Um, it just, I feel like I'm kind of pulled in so many different directions, but I love every single thing that I'm doing that I wouldn't want to change it anyway. Sure. So it's kind of, you know, balanced out at the end, it's like, sure, it gets overwhelming and you feel like you're all over the place. But at the same time, you're like, I love freaking everything. I yeah. love this. I love that. And it never feels like a job, yeah. any of it. Well, that's success right there. Um, and <laughs> we get to do it. Yeah. And we get to do a lot of it together, which is, you know, bonus. I think that's the best part. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I think that's why we've always been able to work together is because I don't want to go all day and be at a job and then not get to see you and then like come back and have to tell you everything. Like I get to tell you all throughout the day, everything sure. or vent or whatever it is. <laughs> like, help me. <laughs> you don't this. do any venting. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, all right. So I know this moment well, um, but I want to ask you to kind of tell the story. So um, early on, you know, you were kind of a recent pro and, you know, when we had met, you had aspirations to be a fitness model. You know, you had this mm -hmm. big dream and big idea of what being successful in the fitness industry would look like. And you kind of got your first big gig, um, which we won't kind of name publications, but first mm -hmm. big, first big gig for a major magazine. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got the check. <laughs> And kind of felt like, uh, what, Devastated. yeah, what am I going to do? This is not going to, you know, mm -hmm. pay for half of my flight, much less mm -hmm. my bills. Yeah. So yeah. tell, tell me about that moment, kind of how it made you feel and yeah, just recap that for us. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget that moment either. That was like, you know, that's, that's like being told as a child that Santa Claus is not real and that's, you know, I mean, even as a child, looking at a child and saying, yeah, that dream that you're always talking about, what you want to be when you grow up. Yeah, you can't be that. You know, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Like, that's what it felt like. Sure. Like, just my heart ripped out. I was devastated. And, you know, it's just like I went, I got asked to be in this major magazine. It was my first time. I mean, let's kind of backpedal here. Sure. My very, very biggest dream my whole entire life, as you know, was to be a famous fitness swimsuit model. I wanted to be walking the runways. I wanted to be in the magazines. Like I, I just like, that's what I sought out to do. I've always loved performing. Um, so I really wanted to do acting as well. Just any kind of performing or acting or modeling or anything. I just wanted to be in the spotlight. I wanted to move to Hollywood. I wanted to do it big. You know, that was what I wanted to do from the moment I saw it. And, um, I saw out my, my whole growing up into like the whole reason I moved to Dallas was to move to the big city and make it happen. You know, um, I wasn't quite brave enough to move all the way out to Hollywood yeah, at 18. Yeah. I wanted to, but I wasn't, yeah, you would have, which is why I stayed. 
obvi. Sure. Um, but that was, you know, that was it. That's what I wanted to do. And I was going to make it happen. And so whenever I moved and then I got my big break, it wasn't, it wasn't a big check. Yeah. And that was sheer devastation. Like I was devastated. I was like, why have I been thinking that this is what's going to get me to the next level? Like, this is not rich and famous or whatever, yeah. you know, like, um, so I, I really, I was pretty distraught for like a while. I really didn't know what to do. I was kind of felt lost and like, I was, you know, obviously this is not going to be able to help pay for anything. I mean, it wasn't anything. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like a part of, but I think too. And so, um, you know, we get a lot of, kind of bright eyed, bushy tail people new to the industry that, you know, oh, I just, if I can just turn professional or mm -hmm. I mean, if I can just get this or get that, like I can, you know, do this full time. Yeah. And, you know, they, they kind of need to hear that message that like, Hey, look, this, you know, what, how I got to where I am, isn't the way you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I preach that to the girls that I see daily, you know, especially my posing girls, because yep. they're in there to turn pro. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to remember, too, that was my third pro show. So it was like I'd already been pro and then I got this gig, but it, nothing was like making me big from that. Um, I've had to actually work and find my ways to build up and make a career out of it, which is why I started doing the posing and then eventually we did the online training and everything. But I've been really good at branding my own self and not just using like you know, the pro stage as something to give me a boost, you know, um, that's why the sponsorships come in, you know, they're not doing it for whoever wins first place. They're doing it, who makes a great representation of themselves and the sport and how they can p help push that company, you know? Yeah. I mean, you basically had to, to leverage, mm -hmm. Hey, here's me on stage. I'm getting placings. Hey, here's me in the magazine. And, you know, what I think a lot of people think is that that has rewards and it does. There is a lot of positives that come from that, but it's not a direct exchange of money for that. Right. Like you, you don't win to... first place and then get a magazine cover from winning first place. And then you get like a $50,000 check. I mean, maybe at Olympia, but <laughs> not men. even that, yeah, you know, yeah. not even that for it. So it's like um, I, I wasn't getting... I wasn't making my living from competing on stage. I was making my living from everything that I was doing that was going with that, so being a pro. Yeah. You just have to learn to leverage all those opportunities into ways to monetize that, which is the business that you described for us. Right. You know, you you teach girls to pose. You have online training, training. programs. You get paid by companies as a representative. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all these ways that you've learned to monetize that. So, but that's, I think, you know, I wanted to tell that story because I think a lot of people need, need to hear that story. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of top pros that don't have. They go work a job, you know, yeah. eight to five, like a normal person and then spend the money they earned at the job to go, com to go be pro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's and a reality for many pros. Yeah, absolutely. And not to mention too, I think a lot of people say, well, all I have to do is turn pro, then I'll get the sponsorship and then you can do it for money. But you're not always going to get a sponsorship, you know, yeah. like just because you turn pro. So, it, I mean, like you got to be good. A, you know, there's lots of people who don't turn pro that get a better sponsorship. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and so sure. it's like it doesn't always do everything. It does a lot. And it's helped get me to where I am now. But yeah, not to downplay the yeah. accomplishment by any means, but just definitely. like I think to get the message across that you have to be that entrepreneur mm -hmm. in the background to make it all work. Yeah. And that's can. something I don't yeah. think a lot of people probably realize that you've been working on so much. Um. Yeah, so let's um, next question would be obviously social media has played a huge part in what you've been able to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of is your job for as a company representative. It is your job for selling online training. Like you have to work a lot on social media. So 
Um, maybe not so much advice on how to build a following. I think there's a lot of advice out there and that's always changing. I don't want this advice to get old, I, but I can't even tell you anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a I'm unicorn like, I don't we're all even, chasing. Yeah. I want to know too. <laughs> but what, what advice would you give for fitness pros that want to increase their social media effectiveness, I guess is a better question. Yeah. I mean, I'm super big on just being real and open and honest about everything. I think that that is really what you know followers are going to want to look for is especially in the fitness world they don't want anything fake they want to know legit they're here to like make a difference in themselves or change their lives or just get yoked or <laughs> get shredded whatever their goals are you know so just be real and open and honest about everything um and i don't know i mean i guess definitely just like creating good content, good quality content, um, something that they're going to want to come back to, you know. Um, mm, yeah, I mean. Kind of stumped here. Yeah, no, that's okay. I think you, you do so much of it. I think it's probably kind of a hard question to tackle. Um, but, you know, I think I what, you're, I, what you're kind of saying in the as your first part of the answer is, you know, you, you're giving away, like there's a takeaway. Someone that follows you isn't just looking at pictures of you. No, and that's what I meant by good quality They're, content. They Not, follow you to learn for themselves or, you know, they get a lot from you. Right. No, and that's what I mean. Like, I don't mean quality, like make sure you're, you know, you have an iPhone 10 plus or whatever, you know, like, yeah. Not, yeah, that helps too. But you want to make sure that you're putting content out that's going to make them want to come back. Definitely. Like, it's not just about putting up a selfie and saying like, look, this awesome picture of me because I got that five o'clock you know, glow. Like they want to know, they want to like come and learn, especially in the fitness world. Like you need to put out workout videos. You need to put out, um, actual workouts, like write the workout, write the reps, write the, what they should do, what they should not do, do, do do's and don'ts. And don't think that everybody just knows, right? Like give them more information. Don't just say like, or, or abbreviate things like kind of like, you know, these are not fitness experts, yeah. so they're they're here to look for you. So, yeah, definitely. That's what I mean, more or less by good quality. Yeah, sure. And, um, you know, you put a ton of attention into, you know, how you lay out posts and what order you do things in. And, you know, you have a whole aesthetic that yeah, oh yeah. you put a lot of work into that. And I don't think there's probably a lot of people that understand what all goes into all that. And I think and I'm, I'm, I know, and it's like it's hard because you're you're saying that, and I'm like I didn't think to say that even right now, yeah. Because uh, and it's that's autopilot the other thing. for you. You've been yeah, doing it so long, exactly. And that's like something that just kind of just comes naturally, anyways. Is just like how things like look. Like I'm a visual kind of person, um, but that's what Instagram is all about. It's very visual, <laughs> so um, it's got to be something you know laid out. It's not just like I post up a picture just because like I snapped it. Sometimes I do, but everything is planned out. You know, I have apps um, that help me kind of organize everything and l my layout and how everything's going to look. Especially like if you're on Instagram in a grid, how it's going to look in like a nine square layout. Um, you know, and and definitely rotation of like videos versus pictures versus wh whatever it is, IGTV, you know, whatever. Um, everything has like a set place and, and that stuff matters. Whether you think it does or not, like you'll, your eye will go to it more um, if it's laid out in a more organized way. And just to kind of boost your social media cred here a little bit, because I don't think a lot of people know to the extent that you've worked in the space. You know, you obviously have a, a big account, which, you know, there's a lot of, I think, girls that have big accounts that people, you know, they may or may not have done a lot to, to gain the, that attention, you know, mm. but you've you've ran multiple large business accounts, yeah. um, you know, in our days, you know, when <clears throat> when I was the minority owner at Gaspin Better Bodies and you were working in the marketing team, mm -hmm. I mean, you were running probably six accounts mm -hmm. in, in that business. Mm -hmm. My head hurts. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and balancing you know clothing release schedules with the quality of content and getting the athletes proper exposure and um doing that across countries and mm -hmm. it was a really big job 
Yeah. I mean, you have to be super organized and definitely a platform was like helpful with organizing all of that. And some, and that I would never recommend that to anybody (laughs) to run. You need to run max like two. That's all I'm doing right now. And it's like, it all still feels like too much. You run yours and the hidden gym account. Yeah. Yeah. Just for people to check out your work. Yes. Yes. No, I, uh, I run my own page because a lot of, you know, influencers have somebody else running their page. Um, and that's another thing too, is that I've built my following and I've built everything from me. You know, there's no body that's doing it or that's made it this way. I mean, sometimes I get a photographer. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, shout out Mike Lamb, Mike Lamb, <laughs> the man, he is awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, there's no bot anything. Yeah. Um, and definitely no uh, risque stuff <laughs> yeah. to get the followers. <laughs> Mine has split down half and half. Skin half to win. Men, half men, half <laughs> women. Yeah, that's a big yeah. stat, though. Yeah. And people don't, you know, that's something I know, you know, as, a, you know, when we were evaluating athletes to sponsor, mm-hmm. you know, something that, you know, for just thinking about in the minds of people looking to, you know, earn business off of social media. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your the gender split of your account is really important. And for a female, like a 50 50 split is, I mean, probably the best you can get. Right. Yeah. Um, cause a lot of these accounts, you know, the female accounts are very heavily male centered. And if you want to monetize that, it's much harder to sell to men cause they're not necessarily buying what you're selling They're They want to no, look, they want to just look. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun running the, uh, Hidden Gym page now too, um, because again, I, any of the other pages that I have ran were more of the uh, clothing brands, which is you know what I love. I had been doing and dibble dabbling in a little of fashion merchandising, or um, and fashion blogging. Fashion merchandising was what I started out doing actually, um, but fashion blogging um, because I love style, I love fashion. And um, so to be able to do it and kind of play creative director, because I was running the photo shoots too to create the you pictures. were kind of a farm to market uh social media employee in that you know uh-huh. you were uh, hiring the photographer selecting the athletes dressing the athletes directing the shoot mm-hmm. selecting the photos and posting yeah no, um, cre- that's why i say I just all it of, was it's creative you know you played a so. role that was kind of five jobs mm-hmm. um and you know you i think it was stressful but you grew a lot yeah doing that work and I and that's kind of going back in the circle too of like what am I gonna do whenever I found out, well my dreams are crushed of being a fitness model this obviously ain't paying for anything that's when we I um you know was sponsored by Better Body so I was a, an athlete with them first then I started working in the company so um, that's when I did really grow and find okay this is what I can do you know like I can. I've really found myself and who I was um, and what my, you know, true calling can be too. And that was like still doing what I'm doing, but really utilizing it and making a business out of it. And I just had to kind of go through some growing pains first. But yeah, definitely when you say that I did a lot of growing, then it was definitely and a very testing time too. (laughs) Yeah. You know, if I can say that. <laughs> maybe not all of that work was appreciated, and that's why you're doing it for us now <laughs> instead of them. But no, um, but it's all. But good. you did, you know. It's all good. We all grow through opportunities, so it's all good. But yeah, don't regret anything. Um, okay, so that's that's a cool history lesson and some advice for people, you know, monetizing their social media. So one big part of your job and the fitness professionals that are wanting to earn money, you know, in these different ways to make this fitness lifestyle that make the dream come true is to be a representative for other companies. Mm -hmm. And you've done a fantastic job at attracting those opportunities Mm -hmm. to the point where you turn a lot of them away just because you can't do it all. Mm -hmm. Um, So talk about like, how do you, how does somebody attract sponsors or affiliate opportunities or paid post opportunities? Like all these people that are willing to pay you um, to endorse product or, um, create content on their behalf. How do you how do you attract that? 
Yeah, I mean, again, I'm like, I'm super adamant on the just being real, being you, Um, you know, just be you and be natural. I mean, nobody wants to, I mean, like, for example, like if it's a product, like nobody wants to be like, you should drink, like, you know, just be real. Like, do you drink it or not? Like, do you like it or not? You know, or whatever it is, you know, just, um, you know, just being real like that, I I think is first and foremost, always. Um, But creating good content in general like we were talking about a second ago you know like being a creative and not relying on the company to do stuff for you like they are going to you to get stuff created for them because they're doing stuff on their own to push through the brand Mm -hmm. and they need somebody you know to represent them that can push it and another area does that make sense? Sure. Am I saying that right? Yeah, you're saying it perfect. Um, they're 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 outsourcing their content creation to you. Right. They pay you for that. Right. And so you have to do a good job. Yes. And they see you do a good job for other companies, and that's part of what makes them trust. You know, this is worth that five hundred dollars, that two thousand dollars, whatever it is, mm-hmm. for this for influencer or this fitness professional to endorse us. Right. And you know, when you're starting out. Um, I can't count how many free gigs I've done, you know, like I didn't just like, oh, she's just a pretty girl. I think I'm going to just give her some money to do this. Like, it's like I had to work to get that like establishment to say like, look, I am reputable. I can do this. Like, look what I did for this company. You know, you have to like build a, um, like resume, if you will. Which is, you know, in the, if people that are interested in this topic, I suggest they go check out your website because you do have a page dedicated to, you know, what do you want to put product in my hand? This is this is what I can offer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's So you kind of have all these um, professional things in place that, you know, many, I think many times companies, I just know from when we worked on the opposite side of the table, Mm -hmm. looking for influencers, it's a very sought after kind of job, but so many people don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get good content from them or they don't know how to respond to emails professionally or on time or like, no, they're all doing it bad. (laughs) So when someone like yourself is organized, professional, has materials, has proven results. Mm -hmm. It's like such a breath of fresh air that companies eat it up. Right. Because it's like just because somebody has a following doesn't, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, there's a lot of jackasses with followings. That's the truth, you know, and they're hard to work with. Yeah. And I, and you know, it's like, I, I have a good, decent following, but I've gotten gigs over people with mil, yeah, four mil, <laughs> you know, and, and, it's just not to say that I'm like not trying to toot my horn. I'm just saying like so arrogant. Yeah, I know. God, I'm just like you barely. So just like all these followers, like just gets to your head. No, but um, you, you know, like I mean, you you know, of course I know. I've, yeah. I've been like stoked about some of yeah. these gigs. I'm like, what? Why did they come to me? And it's like. You know, it just goes to show that the the content, everything that you put into it. And yeah, like being professional, <laughs> I just revert back to Jeff's, <laughs> Jeff's podcast, <laughs> yeah. be professional. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Just because you're on social media doesn't mean you can act like a jackass. You still have to be professional yeah. writing back with the emails and stuff and not like texting or you know, I mean, even writing an email, like make it look good, make it look like, you know, like don't just like, I don't know, all caps and I'm so fucking stoked. Yeah. Like the whole thing, everything matters. I mean, like if you, if you want it to, I mean, like if I you want to have good. And I think too, part of um, what has done you well, and this is part of what you're, you know, you keep saying be real. And I know what all you mean by that, but <laughs> part of that is like, you you're real and you really care mm-hmm. about the people following you. That's part of why they trust you and why when you do endorse things it's successful. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's You can't that's just why I look at them real. as dollar signs and No, I want them to actually use this content. I want them to buy the online training because they want to change their life or they want to get healthy. And then great, it makes me some money in the meantime. But I do that because I want to help other people. And the posing, posing is a passion of mine, 
you know, and I want to be able to share that with other girls and the supplements. I freaking love caged muscle yeah. and I used them before I was sponsored by them. And you and resisted then, supplement sponsorship for a, a long time. I did not take any. I mean, I only had one other supplement sponsor back in the day when I first started just to kind of get a gig. But I I put down some big names. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't remember, I put down some big names because I didn't believe in their product. And I'm not going to push something that I'm not taking or that I don't believe in. Like, I'm, again, being real and honest. Um, and the same thing with anything else, you know, food, clothes, whatever. This is kind of redundant, but like, you know, I think what you're doing is over delivering on those relationships. So mm -hmm. they ask you to do one thing. You kind of, I think more times than not, give them more than they thought they were going to get. Mm -hmm. So just kind of maybe in repeat, like what are some of those things that are, that are over delivering that make, you know, you have long-term relationship with companies or um, keep companies offering you opportunities? Yeah. I mean, like whatever my agreement is, I always go above and beyond whatever that is. Two posts a month, four posts a month and a couple of IG stories. I'm doing way more than that. I mean, it's like almost every day there's an IG story about something. Um, and then definitely the same thing with the post and stuff. Sorry. I'm like, I don't know. I've got something in here. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, where were we? You were talking about how to over deliver. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I definitely do. And I think that's just kind of my nature anyways. Like I just more is more like, um, but it, it's not, um, but I, I do, I think just going above and beyond just like you would, if you were be, trying to be a teacher's pet, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like post more and ask what you can do. You know, when you're done, ask, you know, what about this? Like, shoot them ideas. Like, they're not, again, there to, like, give you the content. They're there to get it from you. So I just always, like, say, hey, guys, can I do this? What about this? What about that? And um, I'm just, like, taking the initiative to create content on my own and not just, like, the two posts that they told me to share that month, you know? Yeah, and I think, too, from the outside looking in, you watch, you, you keep a good pulse on what other influencers are doing, mm -hmm. and you're kind of always banking inspiration. That way, when it comes time to shoot content, you know, you show Mike or whatever, uh, you know, kind of media person we're using, um, hey, look, this I, I need to deliver this content, you know, check these out. These are kind of my inspirations mm -hmm. that I would like to accomplish. So I think that's a big part in the fact that you're always processing, like, content that you want to create right. that way when the opportunities come you know you've got these ideas already yeah definitely and I've been doing that a lot too um, not just with mine but for the gyms yeah. like uh, again I, I'm so excited working on the gyms because it's like a new, new it's project a new project for me you know I've only ever done you know the the clothing or um, athletes and then my stuff um, but now it's like I get to do the gym and like do a, this whole, it just like opens up this other like creation and creativity. Um, so I, I really enjoy working on that one. Um, but yeah, no, there's always like inspiration, like whether that's through Pinterest or just like seeing somebody else's social media and saying, oh, that looks really cool. But I want to say that you should never copy. Yeah. Because it, that like irritates me. Yeah. Belief. How do you feel about people copying your content it drives <laughs> me up the wall it drives me up the wall because I mean think about it like this is something that I thought of that I created I had this vision I saw this <laughs> and I put it all together and then like pop there it is all in one little shot you know and then somebody just like straight up like yeah and then you know, I mean, let's, that's just plagiarism, period. <laughs> it comes with the territory, though. <laughs> right. You know, I think anybody that's a thought leader and uh, successful in driving things forward, right? Um, which we've done a fair amount of, mm -hmm. um, it comes with the territory. I mean, people want to, you know, emulate that. Right. But I know it frustrates you, I had to ask. It's just, <laughs> it does. And it's just because it's, you know, I don't think 
Um, and you know this, that like I've always had, and again, just being open and honest, like I've always struggled with like, I am a very just like creative visual kind of person. That's just how I've always been. Um, and that I think that's why, what has kind of carried me through to being what I'm doing now. But it can, um, so I, th- I think sometimes like being a creative is not as appreciated as like somebody who just like, you know, like I always say, like you went to school for four years and like graduated in academics and stuff. And I didn't do it to that, you know, level. Um, but I don't think it's like as appreciated. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And just in general, like thinking of stuff like that, like that's hard sometimes. Like I, I get stuck in ruts all the time trying to create something. So that's why it's so frustrating. Yeah, Because sure. you're like that. That was so, I came up with that, like, you know. Yeah. Um, kind of kind of wrapping up, we'll touch on your online training business a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit about how that side of your business works and yeah. um, any tips you have for people that want to get into that space. Yeah, it's super awesome. It's something that I had always wanted to do, but just didn't really have the time for. And then, um, you know, we started that up about a year, two years ago, year and a half ago. It was right after I kind of left yeah. uh, the company and we started, we finally had, we some, had more time. some bandwidth to, <laughs> to water our own grass. Yeah. And uh, that was one of the first things on the on the docket. Yeah, and it was uh, it was so exciting because it was, you know, I don't do um, on the floor training. You know, so this was a way for me to be able to reach women everywhere, all over the world. Um, But it's super awesome. It's on my website and um, I have two programs available and um, it's so easy and super cool. So I have an app and um, you just download this app. So once you sign up, you'll get an email link and then you just get my app and you open it up and everything's in there. And it makes it super easy. You can carry me literally with you to the gym. Um, There's workout demonstration videos. You can uh, record or not record, but log all of your uh, weights and your reps. Um, And there's like all sorts. You can even connect um, your uh, MyFitnessPal um, in it so that you can keep and log all your food um, within the app. You can upload pictures. You can um, message me and my team. Um, it's just that's I think is the highlight of the um, of my online training is the app. You know, yeah, that's it's interactive. That, yeah. I mean, it's just it's not a PDF. No, it's not something like my mom was like, where do I print it out? I was like, mom, it's on an app. You definitely download it and you no longer need to I'm, use paper. Uh, I have to print it for her. What? I have to print it for her. You have to print what? The workout's out for her. She's not going to use the app. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. You're joking. No, me and Christina were working on it. Oh my gosh. But anyways, okay. yeah. But I wanted. So it's really super easy, guys. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm. This is the first time I'm hearing this. We need to talk. So one thing I wanted to, I thought was, was cool. Um, and. Depending on when you're watching this, how recent this happened, but you know there was the whole thing with Brittany Dawn, you know, oh. where you know selling programs that weren't getting delivered, mm-hmm. and you know there's probably a lot of that going on. This whole online training through social media is very new, mm-hmm. you know, one two years old. Um, but you've been very uh, transparent in the fact that it's not just you. You know, you have, have a, a team. team and these programs are not fully custom. No. And, but I think it's pretty cool that you just came out and said like, hey, look, I'm not the best trainer in the world. In fact, I'm not even a trainer, but I have had success in fitness and I can tell you what's worked for me. Yeah. And I can help, I can build a team of people that can help you implement that program. And you have not said, I'm the greatest trainer in the world. You've more taken the the seat of, I know what's worked for me. And if you'd like to try that, I can help you. Right. And, I, and that's what I always communicate too to the girls is that, look, this program is not, I mean, this program is built to help you succeed. And it's help, it's to help you learn how to make this a lifestyle for yourself. It's not to say like you need to do all of this precisely and that's the only way that you're going to do great. Like he's out. You, you have to make it work for you, yeah. right? Like there's a sample diet 
there's not like you eat this and this amount, like it's all for you to kind of learn And the same thing with the cardio and even the reps and the, the weights and everything, like everything is not customizable, um, like from me, but for you. It's so that you can customize Which is the harder yourself. way to do it. You know, you... But it helps you learn. Yeah, you're requiring That's people to, to learn. learn how to do it, which is cool because, you know, hopefully after they've done some of your programs, they've learned how to eat and they've learned what how their body responds to certain things and they forever will be more empowered to stay fit. Right. And I mean, I, that's that's pretty much how I've learned. I mean, I know that you've always been my trainer <laughs> and you've kind of told me, but there's, you know, we've kind of had to learn it together. Sure. Um, so, you know, there, there's no better way than to just like jump in it and kind of figure it out. But this these programs are both awesome for that and the app and everything. So and I'm currently doing um, one of the programs and I'm loving it and it's awesome. It's just cool to be in it. You know, I know we've built it and everything, but it's cool when you're seeing it from using it as a user, the user, yeah. you know, and, and I think that that's good, too, because, you know, I want to know how that's they how we. Yeah, yeah, that's quality, quality control. <laughs> OK, so last question, we'll kind of use this as a wrap up. You know, what can you say? Two folks, because we run into these people a lot. You know, they they want to do fitness full time. They love it. We love it. You know, they see someone like you or a couple like us that's able to um, have a successful life and do fitness full time. Mm -hmm. What do you tell? What kind of like over generalized advice do you tell that person uh, if they want to do that? You talk them out of it, or do you tell them steps to, on how to do it? No, I mean. But what do you mean fitness? I, I want to do fitness. Well, it's huge. You know, they could, I'm, you know, you could be a trainer, you could be a gym owner, you could be uh, a, a bikini pro. And, you know, there's like, yeah, I there's mean, a lot I, of ways to, to do it. Yeah. And, and that's what I, I mean. Like, if you do want to do fitness in general, then you're going to have to do something like that. There's no way that you're going to be able to do fitness full time and work like at a bank. I don't know. I mean, you, you can do fitness, but you're not going to be able to do it full time. Like, um, so definitely if you want to own a gym or I, I wouldn't try to talk anybody out of it. <laughs> I well, no, I just mean that in the sense that it's difficult. And sometimes you're just better off saying like, hey, let fitness be fun and keep your bank job. Right. True. True. Yeah. Because owning a gym is not just like easy breezy. I mean, we've made it look pretty easy, but it's, it's not. not. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess uh, maybe the question is more so like if that person that's wanting to make the jump, what do you tell them? Like, I know you like you're going to go for it. You're going to jump head first yeah, and know. figure it's... it out. But what do you tell that person? Yeah, just uh, you need to you need to know that there's going to be some ups and downs and you need to be ready for that. And I would make sure that you um, have some money set aside. <laughs> <laughs> Because the fitness industry is not going to be just like, you know, full of money. Um, and it's not why we do it. It's not to try to make money. It's because we, well, obviously to make money, but that's not why we do it. We sure. do it for our love and passion of fitness um, and exercise and working out and endorphins and all that great stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you need to set some money aside and I would have a game plan. I wouldn't necessarily go into it very blind. I kind of did, though. <laughs> yeah, sometimes being naive is uh, the best thing. But saying that over the past 10 years, what I have learned is that I probably would have wanted to make a better game plan and know or like really research into some things and make sure that you do know what you are doing in the fitness industry. You can't just like go into it and not have any kind of like background, like just become more aware of everything and knowledgeable. Hey, listen to podcasts like this and see what mm -hmm. other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But don't copy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I think that's uh, everything that I've got. Um, you know, your website. Where? How, how do people keep up with you? I know that's probably a dumb question, but right. um, no. go ahead. No, that's that's good. That's good. Um, so first and foremost, you can um, find my website, www.tanaubanks.com. And that's T-A-W-N-A. Um, and that is where you can find most of everything. I mean, if you ignore anything else, you can go to my website and find everything on there, my online training, and then you can even click on some icons and find me through my socials on there. But you can also find me on Instagram. That is at Tana Eubanks McCoy. And then um, the same goes for my uh, Facebook. 
And you can find me on YouTube. Just type in my name, Tana Eubanks, Tana Eubanks McCoy. Each, either one, it'll pop up. There's not very many Tanas. So as long as you got the T-A-W-N-A, you're good. You're going to find me. <laughs> cool. All right, babe. Thanks for the episode. And uh, yeah, you guys find her online. And you know maybe we'll do Real McCoy's Radio Part 2 um, or even let you host a few. I would love to host a few. <laughs> All right, over and out. <laughs>